house of grace, living in his favor. That your words that are timeless will cause such an impact in our lives that there will be a transformation even as there is a renewal of our minds. We thank you for this, Father. We thank you for the operation of your Spirit causing this to happen in our lives. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And let everyone say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I want to welcome you to church this morning. Um, I want you to know that God is here to do you good. Amen. He's here to help you, to lift you, and so that you can operate in outstanding levels of health, victory, promotion, whatever. It's up to you in this year. The thing is that the unction of God's Spirit is available to take you into outstanding levels. But the level of what? You put, put your own at the end of it. Amen. And I'd like to welcome those of you who are joining us electronically. You know, um, we're excited to come to your space. One thank you for the privilege. And if ever you're in the Lagos area, um, do pay us a visit. We'll make it our utmost best to make you feel welcome. You see, because gathered right now in this room are some of the best people you'll ever meet in your life. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's spread that goodness around. You know, just greet somebody, hug somebody, tell the person how glad you are to see him or her. Praise Jesus. All right, now this morning I want to talk to you about authority, the authority of the believer. You know, authority is delegated power. It's a right to act on the behalf of another. And, um, you know, for example, you have the, um, maybe a policewoman, a little policewoman standing at a junction, you know, and then come controlling traffic and just with you know lifting up her, thing, her hands like that she can control all the vehicles moving control um, a, a massive trailer you know now why is it that that can happen it is because there is something that's backing her she has been delegated she's been authorized to stand in that position okay and do what it is that she's doing. Now, um, in her natural strength and might, there is no way she'll be able to stop a moving trailer. There is no way she'll be able to do that. As a matter of fact, let's not even talk about a moving trailer. There is no way she'll be able to stop even a bike, a moving bike with her hands and, and you know, her might and all of that. But because she is delegated or authorized, okay, the force, there is a force that is backing her, that is ensuring that what, that, you know, that everything around obeys. Are you following me? You see, now, um, when the, the, the extent of one's authority or the extent, the latitude to which one's authority can be utilized, the, um, what can determine the limits of one's authority is the person or the authorization. You understand what I mean? The one that authored that individual, okay, that authorized that individual or that authority. You understand what I'm saying? All right. You, you, you know, that is the one that determines the latitude. So, for instance, if you have a, maybe you have a um, staff sergeant, in the, in the military, you know, uh, a sergeant, and then, you, you, you know, in, 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 and you know, he has certain levels of authority, and he could have utilized his authority to do something, but if a colonel comes around, it's a totally different, it's a totally different ball game. You understand that? And the reason is because this guy, he has so much more power or authority than the sergeant. Praise the Lord. Now, do you know that we have been authorized by God? In other words, we can stand on his behalf. He has delegated us. He has given us some of his power. 
He has asked us to stand on his behalf. And you know the power, you know the, you know the force that backs us as believers? Brothers and sisters, it's not the force of a, of, 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 of a country's government. It's not the force of a presidency. It's not a force of a legislature. It is the force of the creator himself. The one that created the heavens and the earth. The one that made everything and that answers to nobody. He is the force that backs you. Praise the Lord Jesus. I, are you following me, brothers and sisters? You know. The, the, the Merriam-Webster dictionary, you know, defines authority this way. It says it's the power to give orders or make decisions. The power to give orders or make decisions. It defines it also as the power or the right to direct or control someone or something. And as it's making this, um, as we are hearing these definitions, it's not just defining something. It's actually showing us um, also how authority is expressed. One of the ways in which authority is expressed is by making decisions or making declarations, you know. And it goes on also, it says, um, authority is the confident quality of someone who knows a lot about something or who is respected and obeyed by other people. So, you, for instance, you can say this person is an authority in law because he knows so much, in, you know, about law and, and, and we can reference him. All right, and then it says also, this is the Merriam-Webster dictionary, and it says it's a quality that makes something seem true or real. Now, there is a way that you can take yourself. <laughs> if you have authority, my brothers and sisters, you can stand in a particular manner and then you can speak and what you're saying, all right, people will recognize it as true. Now, you know, this particular quality can be mimicked. And that is the reason why a 419er can, you know, by taking a particular attitude, can make you think. And then you pat. <laughs> you know, you might think that he has, he's able to do this or he has what, what he's saying is legitimate and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, here is something we must understand. Look at this in Luke, St. Luke's Gospel in chapter 10 and read in verse 19. Here, we find the Lord speaking unto us and letting us to see our authority, how he has authorized us. And he says this. Let's read together. Everybody go. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now when he says I give unto you power, he's not just talking about giving unto, unto you might. He's not talking about giving you muscles, you know, and so that you can push the devil away. He's not talking about, you know, giving unto you some explosive, you know, uh, um, devices. No, he's talking about authorizing you. He says, I've given unto you, I give unto you authority. The Greek word utilized as the word exousia, which means authority, which is better translated authority. Praise the Lord Jesus. So he says, I give unto you authority. In other words, you can act like me or you can act on my behalf. I give unto you power over, not majority, not a lot, not a good number. How much of the power of the enemy? All. I can't hear you. How much of the power of the enemy? All, All the power of the enemy. So, so let me find out. Does this include generational, generational cursing power? Talk to me. Yes, Does this include mami water power? Yes, you know, sometimes people say, ah, you, you know, this is mami water. Does it include, does it include spirit husband power? Yes. Spirit wife power? Does this include, listen, he says how much power? Oh. How much power? Oh. Does this include pressing power? Somebody says I was sleeping at night and then they were pressing me. Does this include pressing power? Yes. He says I give unto you what? Power over, oh. over, oh. over. Oh. If I have power over you, you know, you know the implication of that? It means that you dare not operate or you dare not come around me. Now, but you see the interesting thing about authority is this. 
Authority operates by knowledge. If you don't know your authority, number one, you'd not make use of it. And then secondly, you know, <laughs> it may not be honored by anyone. Authority operates by, by knowledge. Knowledge is the currency of the spirit. It's a currency of the spirit. When you have it, all right, demons know. That's why you'd know the truth and the truth would make you free. Demons know, you know, why is it that, that, why is it that, you know, it is you that God know the truth and then the demons that held you in bondage and all of that, you know, automatically you knew and then they let you go. Why? It's because knowledge is a currency of the spirit. It's a currency of the spirit. Knowledge is not just a passive thing. Say, I know this. Knowledge causes you to operate. Causes you to act in particular manners. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? You know the seven sons of Sceva? The Bible tells us that these guys, they came and um, maybe they had heard these words. Maybe they had read this passage. I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. You know, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And then they decided, seeing this guy who was... Um, demonized they went after him and then they said you know now in the name of jesus brothers and sisters they used j-e-s-u-s -S -S, jesus jesus sometimes people think that oh just just saying the name if, if i just say that jesus you know and it makes it makes it makes it quick to take place in the kingdom of darkness <laughs> they use jesus And then the demons asked and said, we know Jesus. Whoosh! The demon used Jesus. His mouth didn't burn. <laughs> he said, we know Paul, but who are you? Who are you? Truth, brothers and sisters, is that they know when you know. And because they know, when you know, they know that if you know, they are finished. Know that. God is not bothered about capacity of the enemy. He's bothered about the paucity of your knowledge. How much knowledge do you have? What do you know? So you find him utilizing all of his effort in trying to make you know. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see, see, that's everything that he's doing. And he keeps teaching, and he keeps teaching. You, you find Paul, and then Paul is praying. And Paul's prayer is not, you know, for God to give to you. His prayer is for you to know that he'll give you, that, 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 that he'll grant unto you, 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 you know, uh, um, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, knowledge of him, that you may know. Not that you may be equipped. But that you may know. Hallelujah. It's important to know. And this is the reason why, you know, uh, uh, um, is the reason why the devil puts a lot of, um, he, he, he castigates knowledge. And he will say such things as, you know, and then we hear it. Ignorant people say things like this. You, you, you know, um, you see, all they do is all they do is talk, 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 talk. Let's see some action. Demons don't respect action. I said demons don't respect action. It is knowledge that makes you free. What you know. So knowledge is a currency of the spirit. Knowledge is vital for um, use of authority. Amen. Now, secondly. Here are four key things, okay? Number one, I said authority is utilized by. All right. Now, number two, and so you can write, write this down. Now, the power back in the authority goes to work when the authority is used. If you don't make use of it, the power will not work. And so if the policewoman stands at that junction, you know, or maybe even a policeman, very muscular and everything, stands at that junction, and he just stays there. And vehicles are moving and he, he wishes for them to turn around and all of that what's going to happen nothing nobody will obey him not, nothing's going to happen is that not true yeah 
If you don't make use of it, the power back in you will not go to work. Thirdly, to use authority effectively, you also must be under authority. If you're not under authority, then you can't utilize it effectively. Okay? We'll talk about that more as we go ahead. Um, and number four, once the author has authorized, the author no longer is present. Or doesn't have to be present. Once power has been delegated, the one who delegated does not have to be present anymore. As a matter of fact, if he's present doing anything, he doesn't have to do that thing which he has delegated. If he's there doing anything, he will be violating, or better still, he will be minimizing okay, the authority that he has given. He'll be minimizing it. Once authority is delegated, the one who has delegated the authority no longer operates. It's the reason why God doesn't operate on the earth anymore. The moment he made man and he said, and let them have dominion, God was taken out of the equation of the earth. All right? I, I, I used to wonder, and, you know, but why, why did God not just come and slap the devil, you know, when he was trying to harass man and all of that? And then I realized he could not do it. Why couldn't he do it? Because he no longer had the authority there. He no longer had the authority there. Once man had the authority. So we find God. We find God. Who, who made the animals? God made them, right? And then the Bible says God made the animals that he made. He brought them to the man whom he made but whom he had now authorized. And then to find out what the man will call them. Why? Because God said, let them have. And whatever they called it became their name. And God didn't say, you made a mistake. Oh. That thing that you called dog. The thing, were you trying to spell my name backwards or what? Why dog? Why did you not call it Ekita? How's it been name? Anyway, so, come on. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? All right? God didn't say, you made a mistake. The Bible says whatever he called it. Whatever. God respected it. See, if you're going to operate effectively, all right, you would have to operate within the ambits of what God says. The, the, uh, the word of God is his authority. The Bible says that God regards his word more than his personality. And so God he says, God, God he, he much more has, has highly exalted his word more than his name. And God will submit to what he has said. He, he says that that which has gone out of my mouth, I will not alter or break it. But a lot of us, because we are people who know what it is to tell somebody this and then go back and then take it away from the person, you know, we don't seem to understand that God is highly principled. What he has said, he's going to stay by it. Hallelujah. And if you want to be effective in life, you'd have to learn what it is that he has said and let what he has said control your life. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know. Now, this fourth um, key thing about authority is what derails a lot of people, you, you know, in life. Because they said that once the author, once the author has authorized, the author no longer goes to do it. Some of us are working, some of us are, you know, we're in places, all right? We work in particular places. If you work, can I see your hands? Whether you're working for yourself or you are working for someone, any work, work, work. All right. Because there are some people whose hands are down and I want to effect this scripture on you. The Bible says those that don't work should not eat. So this morning, 
all those of you that don't work, we bind your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. You know, so here, um, when, where, where you're working, all right? Um, so, f f for instance, okay, you, you're working in the bank, right? Say, let me see. So, um, what do you do in the bank? You're in charge of business development. All right. So, who, who authorized you? Who's the person? Your, your MD. Okay. Um, does your MD come sit down in your office? It doesn't. How strange. Okay. So as head of business development, what, what is it that you do? What, what, what are you just to solve? What? Okay. So, maybe, maybe I'm a customer with you, you know, and, and all of that, and I have um, certain issues I need to solve, you, you know, and I look at you, I don't like you. So I, I decide to go to your MD, and I say, listen, there's this problem I have, and, and all of that, you know. Um, so what is going to happen, you know? So I went to the MD and told him, listen, I have this problem, and, and what, what's, he going, what, what's, what's he going to do? He'll send me back to you. Is the MD that wicked? He will not do it. Why? He will send me back. The guy is a wicked guy, man. Yeah. Upon, I, I mean, I came. Spent time. Came to him. And I explained all my problems. He won't do anything. He tell me to go back. Why? He has authorized you. Now, here is the thing. Why do you think that God, who is much more principled than an MD, will now act differently? When God has given the authority, we expect that God will still go ahead and do the things for us. Behold, I give unto you power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And when the pressure of the enemy comes, we call, oh God, oh! The pressure of the enemy, oh God, oh God! My mouth. Oh, died last night. Oh. And then we are we are rejoicing over stupid testimony. When God authorized you to deal with all the power, not some of the power, all the power, you were being pressed. Something had the had the audacity. Say, Pastor, if I had the authority, <laughs> would it impress me? <laughs> ah, that's a problem. That's a problem, you see. Where knowledge is not operational, authority is not utilized, the power back in it doesn't go to work doesn't go to work. <laughs> Glory to God. Are you following me, brothers and sisters? I remember something happened years back in the, um, before, we, we, before we began to have children, and my, my wife told me, I'd never noticed it. My wife told me this, said, honey, c c c come see. And she pointed out, said, there's an owl. You know owl? Yes, Big eyes. Yes. <laughs> You know, he said, there's an owl. Now, there was a tree, there was a guava tree just um, outside of our bedroom window, you know, um, a little distance from our bedroom window. And, and um, she pointed out, she said, there's this owl, and it's always there. So I looked, and it really was there. I just, I didn't bother about it. The next day, I looked, and it was there. So I, I just said this. I said, get out, never return. That's all I said. And then my wife checked, you know, the next day. I said, this thing is not here. I didn't bother checking. Weeks after, she, goes, she, she was checking it. And finally, it, it wasn't there anymore. Wow. For as long as... Now, there's no problem with owl. Owl is bird created by God. I know some people think that it is, it is somebody that transformed to owl and... They are, 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 are. Even if it is somebody that transformed to owl, it is okay. Over all the power. 
who are all the power. <laughs> Praise Jesus. You know. And, and that was the end of it. Amen. And then I remember one time, I was, because you see, and these are the things that people, people can look at and say, oh, these are the reasons why you don't have children yet. And then I go look for deliverance. My brothers and sisters, it didn't say, behold, I give pastors power. It didn't say, behold, I give deliverance ministers power. Every believer can be a deliverance minister. You are a demon caster out. You understand that? Yeah. It's not a special ministry. And I was lying down, you know. And because sometimes, sometimes people don't say certain things, you know. People think that, oh, you know, yeah, um, all these churches that they speak very fine grammar and the pastor speaks very pristine and everything, you know, maybe they, they don't have power. Don't try me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And I was lying down on this particular day. It, it, it was night, but uh, um, I noticed while lying down on the bed, I noticed that somebody walked into the room okay I, I was sleeping I, 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 then I, I was awake and I noticed somebody walked into the room now the person did not walk into the room opening the door no no he just walked in just walked in I noticed him coming in so I was lying down like that and he came up from this way and I, I noticed him coming in and then he circled the bed went around like that and I was lying there and I, I was watching I was watching him and then came over and then went to the head of the bed now, the bed was directly against the wall. But the guy, this guy was standing there. You understand? So, I mean, so the spiritual thing. And although I was just looking, you know, and I, 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 I seen him. And I said this. I just said, go by the time he got down, what, what are you doing here? I didn't ask him, what are you doing here? I was just thinking that in mind. And I just said this. I said, get out. That's all I said. I said, get out. Now, when I said that, just like that, this thing, it was not as if somebody poured water on it. It was like, have you seen rat that water was poured on? It was exactly like that. And it just ran away. Now, when I said get out, as sim simple as that, you know, I, then my wife woke up, now all, all the while I was lying there, I didn't see my wife, you know, you see, but then she woke up, and, and then um, I woke up also, because as I said, get out, it was that simple, but it was strong, it was actually a shout, it is that shout that woke my wife up, what I just said, it, I didn't shout, I just said, get out, that's what I said, praise Jesus. And that demon went away, ran away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must understand what God has given to you. You must stop thinking that God is going to come now and operate for you. You have authority. I said the power of God is given to you. God's capacity, God's, God's, uh, um, God's power has been given to you to operate with. If you don't operate with it, my brothers and sisters, you will not experience the help of God. You may suffer hurt. He said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means. In other words, it cannot pass anywhere. If it comes from up, it can't pass. From down, it can't pass. From the boss, it can't pass. From your enemy, it can't pass. From your friend, it can't pass. From your family, it by any means. By your mistake, Seth, it can't pass. Hallelujah. Somebody says, it is because I did not pray. That is why the devils had the power to enter. I say, by any means. By any means. By your lack of prayer, it can't even pass. But when we don't realize that, we, we abdicate our roles. It's important to understand. Say, I'm authorized. I'm authorized. Hallelujah. Say, I have the authority of, of the Lord. Look at this. Look at this. Because we think a lot of times that, oh yeah, maybe, 
maybe, you know, let, let God come to, when you, have, when you think God is going to come and do the things for you, my brothers and sisters, you'll be like that individual who is going, you'll be like me, who went to the MD. And say, MD, please. You are the ogre, pata, pata. Then he said to me to go and meet. I said, you don't understand. My situation is a serious one. He will keep trying to convince me to go. Is that not true? Yeah. And God keeps trying to tell you, you can handle it. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. You can handle this thing. See what you are bigger than. I mean, that's the Lord telling you. See what you are bigger than. You are bigger than this pressing. You are bigger than this spirit husbandism. I say you are bigger than this thing. Look at this, Matthew. Lord Jesus says this. Matthew, in, 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 in the reading in chapter, the Lord said the same thing to, to, to um, Peter in Matthew in the 16th chapter and the 18th verse. And then said the same thing in the 19th verse. And then also in the 18th chapter and the 18th verse. So I like us to read the 18th verse, okay, of Matthew 18. And it says, Verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I want us to read in a different translation and see. Okay? And let's take a look at it in the, um, which translation? Let's take a look at it, the, the message translation. The message translation. All right. Hmm. Take this most seriously. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. Are you ready to say yes on earth? A no on earth is no in heaven. What you say to one another is eternal. And I mean it. Glory to God. You know. A yes on earth. If you, if you, uh, let's see. Let's have another translation. One of, the, one of the translations says, what you allow on the earth is what is allowed in heaven. Are you allowing pressing? You say, if God does not want it on my body, why will he be there? Oh, it's because you allowed it. He said, but, he, but, but, but if God did not allow it to come, God, God yeah, 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 you, you know, when, 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 when the thing passed to come, okay, God had examined it and saw you could deal with it. So he said, all right, all right, no problem. You know, let it go, let it go. And then when it came and it stayed and, and God was amazed. Why was he amazed? That you like it. This my son likes pressing. Good Lord. Maybe he thinks it is massage. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know. Said so this my daughter likes this spirit husband. She likes short man moving around with her that nobody can see. She thinks it is bodyguard. You need to refuse stuff, my dear. I say you need to refuse stuff. Hallelujah. How do you utilize authority? How, how, how is authority utilized? Brothers and sisters, authority is not utilized by you pleading with something. No. You must be assertive. That's why Lord's saying here, it is what you allow. What you allow is that which is allowed in heaven. And you need to understand, it's the authority of God that you have. Glory to God. There's a story we find in scriptures. In Mark, um, Matthew and chapter 8. From the fifth verse, we read about this centurion, Roman soldier, who um, came to meet Jesus for his servant. He had a servant. He had somebody working for him and the person was sick. And then he came to meet Jesus and, and said, you know, my servant is ill. I, 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 I'd like him to be, to be healed. And Jesus said, no problem, I'll come heal him. And then the centurion said to Jesus, no, 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 not so. You don't have to come. Because I am a man under authority. I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And so he said, speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus was amazed. Jesus said, wow, in all of Israel, I haven't seen faith as great as this. That means the utilization of authority, brothers and sisters, is the expression of faith. He said, I have not seen faith 
in all Israel like this. You know, and so he said to the man, go, your servant is, is whole. Praise Jesus. The Bible tells us in the very same hour, the servant was healed. Now, brothers and sisters, authority is utilized by declaration. It's one of the ways in which it is used. We must know what it is to make our declarations of the things that God has said. Are you following me? And make the declarations second way in which it is utilized. You must make the declarations with boldness. With audacity. You make the declarations to specific situations. Hallelujah. Many times we don't seem to understand that situations here. That they have ears. The tree that Jesus spoke to had ears. I want you to understand that cancer has ears. I want you to understand that pressing has ears. Whatever it is you call it, brothers and sisters, it has ears. And you can address it by name. And tell it, leave me. Glory to God. Are you following me? I love the way the Miriam Webster Dictionary defined it. You know, it says it is that confidence. You know, he says the confident quality of someone who knows. Someone who knows. There's that confidence that you have. And therefore, you are able to make it true. You know, because you know. You know the one backing you. Praise the name of Jesus. You know. And when you address a particular issue, when you speak unto it, and then you act that way also. The sad thing is that, you know, we are going through life because we don't realize it. We're going through life and we want to sleep and then we're afraid. Oh God, I don't know if this thing will press me tonight. Oh, oh it's not like that. Say, come, press her, press her, come this night. Press her, this night, come, this night. Say, this is show, 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 show down. Show down. Hallelujah. You need to make the hunter the hunted. Because God has changed the equation. I say you are authorized. I say you are authorized. Amen. Let me close with this. See brothers and sisters. We are authorized. Number one. By the Lord Jesus Christ. He said behold I give unto you power. He is giving that to us. Secondly my brothers and sisters. We are authorized like the Lord Jesus Christ. Like he was authorized. Is the same way we are authorized. That means that, you know, everything that he could do while he was on earth, we also can do. Don't take my word for it. Look at what Jesus said. It's Jesus himself that said that in John chapter 20. John 20, 21. Praise Jesus. All right. Can we read together? Go. Then said Jesus to them again, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me with the same capacity. So just like God spoke about Jesus and said, This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Yea, ye him. My brothers and sisters, understand this, that that same declaration has gone ahead for you over all creation. And God has spoken about you and says to all creation, Yea, ye ha. Yea, ye him. Yea, ye. Come on, are you following me? <laughs> nothing, has the, nothing has the power to resist your voice. Lack cannot withstand you anymore. As he was sent, so are you sent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is not saying, I'll try to. No. It's the Lord Jesus who said so. As my father sent me. With the same capacity. With the same authority. With the same audacity you should move. What I can do, you can do also. Thirdly, brothers and sisters. We are authorized as Christ. In other words, we can act like him. See what the Bible tells us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, written in verse 20. And it says, as, as ambassadors, now then, as we are ambassadors for Christ, 
as though God did beseech you by us, we beseech you in the stead of Christ, be ye reconciled to God. We can take his place now. What he wants to do, do it now. Whatever the master will do, do it now. You have the authority for it. You are his ambassador. You represent him. Hallelujah. You can step into your family. If there is an individual that's sick and hurting, that's in trouble, you can step in there and say, today it ends. It ends today in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you following me? Glory to God. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Jesus, Jesus speaking, Matthew 10, 1. I just feel like I show this to you. And it says, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. That's what we do with them. We don't discuss with them. To cast them out. We don't find information from them. So what are you doing in this place? Who sent you? What did the mother say? What did he, I, I can't understand that. How can you think that the devil will give you information to use in life? Don't you know the moment you begin to utilize his information, you are under his rule? Don't you know that you are a servant to whomsoever you yield yourself servants to obey? What are you doing there? And some of us, foolishly, we, we really say, say, ah, he said that it was the mother. The mother was the one that put it. Oh, no, it's the grandfather. The father, grandfather was the one that took the hand. Nonsense. Foolishness, foolish, foolishness should be legislated as a crime. What, what do you think? We need to send that proposal to the Senate. <laughs> All right, so put it back up. <laughs> and so he says, he says, power to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Let's jump on to verse 8. Verse 8. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. And the Lord says this. Now, because you have this, verse 8, and it says, heal the sick. Who's going to heal the sick? <laughs> Do you notice it didn't say, tell me to heal the sick? Do you notice that? Come on, you notice that? You can step on somebody and say, I can heal you. If you know what you have, you not say, God will heal you through me. No, I will heal you. I will heal you. I will heal you. If I touch you, you will not die again. Yes. Praise Jesus. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. Freely. Freely. Go use this freely. Amen. Get into life now and use the authority God has given to you. Don't expect God to do what he has told you to do. You go in now and do it. I say you go in now and do it. You go in now and do it. Do it. Do it. Leave with the consciousness. Say no power hats out of hell can affect me. Nothing can destroy my life. I am indestructible. I am authorized by God. Nothing shall by any means hurt me nothing can hurt me in life I say 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 cancer cannot hurt me I say diabetes cannot hurt me I say androbas cannot hurt me I say stray bullets cannot hurt me I said, this is my year of outstanding levels. Outstanding levels of authority. Outstanding levels of victory. Outstanding levels of promotion. Of prosperity. It is your year. It is your year. Rise to your feet. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Lift your hands up towards heaven. Say, Father, I'm grateful to you. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Can hurt me. Because I am authorized by you. In the name of Jesus. I operate like you. As you sent me. That is how you were sent. Master Jesus. I am not inadequate. What you have. I have. Because of that. What you could do. I can do. In this life. I refuse. To be limited. I am unlimitable in the name of Jesus. This is the me that you have made. I live with my authority, the authority you have given to me. 
in Jesus' name.